Hello, and welcome to this reading guide video on chapter 25 of the OpenStax textbook. In this chapter, you're going to read a few sections in preparation for our second unit of this course on geometric optics, which covers how light, and as we will see in class, electrons, move through materials. So we begin with an introduction to the topic, and then on the second page, we have a nice discussion of how manifest this particular topic is in your everyday life. Section 25.1 introduces the idea of the ray. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about rays and whatnot in class, but a good way to think of it in terms of the ideas we've already discussed is the path of the photons. So you can imagine the little photons traveling in nice straight lines, those are your light rays. And geometric optics mostly deals with rays. So we're going to be mostly, with a few exceptions, working in the so-called particle picture, where we'll be thinking about photons as particles of light and electrons as particles. We won't be dealing with the wave nature of these objects very much in unit two, that will come in Unit 3, which begins after your first exam. Section 25.2 is the law of reflection. And the big thing to get out of this particular section is really summarized in this picture. The law of reflection states that the object with which a light or electron leaves after reflecting a surface is the same angle as which it came in. This should make some intuitive sense using the particle picture of light and electrons. Imagine just a ball bouncing off of the ground. The angle with which the ball leaves is the same as the angle with which the ball comes in. You're also introduced to a key convention of geometric optics the convention for measuring angles. In this entire unit, we shall be measuring our angles like this with respect to what's called the normal or perpendicular to the surface. So if you remember from 131, the word normal just means perpendicular. And throughout this unit, we will be measuring our angles with respect to the normal. Do not ever measure your angles with respect to the surface. Things will not work out. You then have a nice description of why some objects are shiny and some things are not. Why can you see a reflection in some objects and not in others? This is good information to know, but not quite as critical. This discussion of how much of a person you can see in a mirror and whatnot, you can kind of skip through. We'll give this a more thorough treatment with some proper geometry in class. Then we get to section 25.3, which is the law of refraction, beginning with the definition of refraction. This, of course, is very critical. Moving into a nice discussion on the speed of light. Now, we've talked a little bit about this in class, but I know a few of you asked, how has the speed of light been measured? And the top of page 987 gives a nice example of one way in which the speed of light has been measured. One of the key things to get out of this unit is essentially this expression right here, the definition of the so-called index of refraction. So make sure that you really understand this concept. Then on the next page, you've got a list of indices of refraction for various materials. You don't need to know this. I would always provide you any numbers you need. One key to point out is that air has an index of refraction of very close to one. So you can see that for air, light moves at roughly the same speed as it does in vacuum. You have an example problem using the index of refraction. This is a good thing to pay attention to as you will have a few of these types of problems in your preparatory homework. And then we move into the law of refraction. 
This book has sort of an example of why the law of refraction kind of makes some sense. I don't particularly like this example. We'll do a more thorough reasoning of why the law of refraction makes sense in class using the wave picture of light. But what I do want you to know is I want you to know what the law of refraction or Snell's law is. So you need to know this and you need to know what all of the symbols in this expression mean. And then you have a couple of examples of this idea here. Good examples to study because again, you'll have problems of this type in your homework. So give that a look. And this is where you will need to stop. So you're just going to read sections through 25.3. Everything after that we'll deal with in class. I just want you to have some of the basics. This concludes this video.